Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Angie, I'm glad you're here. I hope you'll hit that subscribe button and join our YouTube family. I would love to have you here. Today we're gonna to talk about migraines. I'm gonna give you an update on what my situation is and how I treat my migraine pain. I have a little bit of a unique situation in that I am 56 years old and I have had migraines since I was 14. They're not really able to, to do any specific or super helpful things to treat my migraines. I have chronic daily migraines. So I have a migraine of some sort every day. It, it ranges on a scale of, typically we use a scale of one to 10. If it's down to a one or two, it probably doesn't even register with me at this point. According to my neurologist who specializes in hard to treat migraines, I just don't even recognize that it's there because I've become so accustomed to feeling it. It's just normal at this point. So when it gets up to like a three or a four, then it's very noticeable to me, but I can usually function through it to a certain degree. It depends on what I'm doing. Can't deal with outside like light hurts, smells, sounds, hurt, that kind of thing. If it gets up before like a six or a seven, typically a seven, I'm in bed. I just can't even deal with it. So here you'll see next to me, um, these are my best friends in the whole wide world. <laughs> when it comes to migraines, these are the end all be alls for me. And these are a multitude of ice packs and this is what I use. This one is, these are all pretty thawed as you can see. They're not frozen right now because I've been using them a lot lately. But um, this is a larger ice pack that's intended for your shoulder. So it has a strap back here that you can put your arm in and to lay on the back of your shoulder. I like this because when I get a migraine, if it gets to the point where I need to lay down with ice packs, I'm literally chasing pain all over my head. Like I'll lay down in the bulk of the pain or the, what I'm feeling the most is in my temples. And if I put ice on my temples, that pain reduces and then I feel it on the back of my neck. So I'll put an ice pack on the back of my neck and then I feel it on the top of my head. It gets, everything gets so aggravated and so inflamed and so angry that literally my entire head is a source of pain at that point. So having something this large and this flexible is very beneficial to me because I can cover a great deal of area with this. This side is very lightweight and mesh and does not provide a lot of protection, protection or insulation from the ice packs inside. This is polar fleece, so it's thicker. Um, this is great if I'm super, super sensitive to touch because then I can use this side, still get the relief from the ice, but it's not so, so strong, so cold that it burns my skin. So these are, this is one of my best friends. This is a small one that I believe I got this from, I believe I got this at the hospital to be honest with you. Um, and it is, a, it is a hot or cold one, although I've never used it for heat, I've only used it for cold. This thing stays so cold. Like this I almost always have to wrap in a dish towel or a washcloth or something because it stays so, so, so cold. This is great for the back of my neck. This one almost always goes Oh, you guys, that feels so good. Like I'm hurting right now. I would say I'm probably at a four right now. Um, so yeah, it's today's a struggle. This feels really good. I just want to be quiet now and sit here with this on my on my neck. This is also great um, when it's behind your eye because it's smaller. So you can place it on your eyes. It'll reach your temples, but it doesn't cover up your nose. So it doesn't make it difficult to breathe. And when I get done with this video, I'm gonna lay down with ice packs because, oh my gosh, that feels so good. This is a smaller one, and I think I got this for one of the kids' lunchbox, but I'm not real sure. I've had it forever. Um, it, it's very soft. It's covered in almost like a flannel type material. This, this gets frozen, but it doesn't stay cold for very long, maybe 10 or 15 minutes, and that's about it. So um, if you're at that point where you, you just need a little something, something to draw back the pain enough that you can go to sleep, this is great. Um, otherwise, he's, he's not, he doesn't stay cold for very long, so he's not really my go-to um, ice pack. This one I got when I had knee surgery, and I, um, for, on the recommendation of my physical therapist, I ordered this from an actual physical therapist supply place online. This thing gets 
icy like you cannot put this straight on your skin like you can't it is so this is almost colder than ice if that makes any sort of sense this you have to wrap in some sort of a towel and it's super super heavy so i don't typically use this like this way i will lay on this i will lay this way um to again to cover up a, a large portion of my head um, or I will lay and lay it this way, ear to ear. Um, but it's heavy, but it stays super cold for a long time and that feels really good. And this is a hand towel. And I don't know if you guys can see, but it's got blue dye on the bottom of it. And that is from this polar fleece. That's from this. Um, it's not going to stain like I try to keep something over my pillows or on top of the bed So I don't make a mess on the sheets But it doesn't really bother me if I wake up in the morning and there's blue dye on the sheets because it washes right out I don't even have to treat this with anything I don't have to put like stain remover or laundry detergent or not laundry detergent dish detergent on it I just throw it in the wash like I do with anything else. I don't wash it separately I don't really worry about it and that blue dye just comes right out all by itself I do try to protect it from things that I don't launder, like my comforter is horrendously expensive and quite large and it has to go to the dry cleaner. So I do everything I can to keep that off of the comforter, but that's, these are my go-to, like ice is my best friend. Ice is what brings me more relief um, than anything that's, that's not a medication. So the other thing that I do, and I want to caution you, like I cannot say this strongly enough, if this is something you're going to do, you need to leave a, a, a good 30 minutes in between these two processes or you're going to hurt yourself. You're gonna hurt your skin. So please don't do one and immediately the other in any order because you will hurt yourself. So when ice isn't working, the other thing that I will do is a very long, very hot shower again if i'm using ice and i decide i need to shower i wait i take the ice off and i wait at a minimum of 30 minutes because you're, it takes that long for your skin to release that coldness from the ice if you put heat of any kind let alone high heat on skin that's been cold you're going to create a burn and vice versa, if you get out of a hot shower and it hasn't helped you and you put ice on that heated skin, you're gonna cause a burn. So don't do that. Make sure you leave a good amount of time so that your skin has returned to your normal body temperature before you go to the other extreme. For me, hot showers are wonderful. I don't know that there's any medical reason for it. Like I understand the reason ice helps. It constricts the blood vessels, it slows the flow of blood, it numbs the nerves that send the signals of pain. Instead of going my, you know, pain, 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 your head's going, oh, that's cold. And it's not throbbing like this, it's just constant cold. So I understand why that works. I understand that the science behind that. I don't know why the hot shower works, but it makes me feel fabulous, it really does. All right, when you're talking about a migraine, fabulous is pushing it, but it really does help me tremendously. Um, I think, Water has always been a source of comfort for me all of my life. When I was a teenager and I would get in trouble or I would get in a fight with my best friend or my mom would get, be upset with me or whatever, I would walk downtown. We lived on a city <clears throat> on the Missouri River and there was a there's a marina there and at the edge of the marina is a, a little outcropping of rocks and on top of that is a small, kind of like a faux white house just to let the, the boats coming into the marina know where the marina starts and where the rocks are i would go i would walk down the river which is probably a good three miles i would walk down the river and i'd climb out on those rocks and i would just sit there and watch the river for hours and it was always where i found peace always if i had a big problem i needed to solve i went to the river if i had a fight with my best friend i went to the river if my mom was mad at me i went to the river if i had something a big decision to make i went to the river that's just what i did so water has always been a huge source of comfort for me. Um, whether you're taking Epsom salt baths or whether you're taking bubble baths and a glass of wine, I think a lot of us, water brings about a sense of calmness and serenity and peace. And so 
for me, the shower does that also. I'm fortunate in that I can turn on the hallway light or the uh, lamp in the master bedroom and get into the shower and not turn on any of the bathroom lights. Um, it provides enough light that I can see quite easily. It just, it's just shadowed. It's not dark by any means. It's just shadowed. I can read the shampoo bottle. I can read the body wash. I can do all of that stuff. But it provides um, an oasis from the light in my eyes, which is huge when I have a migraine. I will just let that shower run. The hot water is soothing. It calms. I think it relaxes the muscles in my neck and my shoulders and my back, my upper back. I think it helps reduce the tension and the stress that you feel when you're in pain all the time. The shower is a place where I don't have to guard my facial expressions. If I, I don't have to hide whether I'm crying. I don't have to hide. I don't, ha I can just, I can just be in whatever state I am at that moment. I can just be, and that's a huge stress release as well to not have to pretend that you're that you're not in excruciating pain or you don't have to pretend that you don't hurt as much as you do or whatever the scenario is. I, I think it's just a safe haven. Um, it's become a safe haven for me at any rate. The heat really does help me and I have found that when I take my medicine and my medicine isn't working as well, if I take my next dose of medicine and immediately get in the shower, it works better. Maybe it's just because it's a second dose of medicine. I don't know. Maybe it's the shower. Maybe it's all in my head. Honestly, I don't know and I don't care. If it works, I'm all for that. Like, I don't even care the reason why. Um, I have tried the Amavig preventative shot, which you take once a month. I took it for six months and it didn't do anything at all. I have two preventative medications that I take every day. One is a heart medication. I don't have anything wrong with my heart. It's just for whatever reason, they've discovered that it helps with migraines. And the other is um, a medication that works on your, it's like an epilepsy medicine, works on your central nervous system, it's supposed to calm your central nervous system. I have two rescue medications that I take on the onset of migraines. I don't take them both at the same time, but I have two that I can choose from. One is sumatriptan, which is the generic form of Imitrix. Um, and it, it will work wonders for me if I can take it and immediately go to bed. I don't know about you. I can't do that very often. Like I just, I can't do that very often. So it is not my go-to choice. It also makes me violently ill. If I don't take it and I'm not asleep within 10 or 15 minutes, I'm vomiting because of it. The second rescue medicine I have is um, Maxalt. I used to take Maxalt a long time ago and it worked really, really well until it didn't work at all. Like there was no in between. It was like today, great relief. Tomorrow, you took a Tic Tac. Nothing, nothing. And it, it seems to be that way for a few different people. I've talked to a couple of different people who have migraines and they've had similar experiences with Maxalt. Um, because I have trouble with the sumatriptan, I asked my doctor a couple of months ago if I could go, if I could try the Maxalt again. And it had been probably three years since I had tried it. She said, yeah, it's a good long break, so it might work for you. It works really well if I take it right away. Right now, I'm seeing pretty good results with it and I'm pleased with that. So I think the most I can do is manage the symptoms. And how I manage the symptoms is ice, long hot showers, um, I use over-the-counter Excedrin migraine is my absolute lifesaver and it gives me more relief than any other medication I try, including the prescription rescue drugs. Um, I know there's a big debate raging right now about whether Excedrin migraine and ex extra strength Excedrin are the same thing. I don't know what the formulaic differences are. I don't care. I do not care. I can tell you I was told they are the exact same medication and I was like, great, extra strength Excedrin is way cheaper, I'll buy that. And it did not have the same impact. So I don't know if there's a slightly different ratio in there. I don't know if it's completely mental and in my head and I I just know and trust that Excedrin migraine is going to work, therefore Excedrin migraine works. I don't know, I don't care. I will gladly pay the difference. Truly do not care. Um, 
Migraines are notoriously difficult to treat. I mean, everybody's brain is different. Obviously, that's why we all have different personalities. We all have different quirks. We all have different likes and dislikes. So the way our brain reacts, the way we react to a migraine is different. And the things that are going to help the most with a migraine are different for every person. So don't give up, keep going, keep asking questions, keep insisting on help. So it's ice packs, Excedrin migraine, long hot showers, um, the occasional Topamax shot from the hospital or the urgent care clinic, um, and continuing to seek out quality medical care. I won't stop. Um, there's new breakthroughs and new developments and new migraine treatments. Anymore, it seems like every two or three weeks you hear about something new. So I continue to be um, aware and asking about treatment options and asking about medications and asking about things I can try. And I hope that you'll do the same. And thanks for tuning into these guys. We will talk soon. Thank you.